I think what you've got is two basic traditions. One, that God is coming down to Mount Horeb and giving the revelation, and one that he's coming down to Mount Sinai and the revelation. And it's here in Exodus 1 that you see this transition. And, I, and as I argued in my Melchizedek book, it's in these transitions that you find the editorial work where they're they're basically trying to cut and paste two things together, and they've got to do some changes to make these fit because they want to fit the Sinai tradition, right? Um, from, from Exodus into the Horeb tradition, which is largely from Deuteronomy. And we see right here in Exodus 3, 1, it specifically says Horeb, but the rest of Exodus is going to refer to it as Sinai. How do you, how do you pull these together? Well, well and this is, this is where th some other arguments have been made as far right. as a, a literary reason. Mm -hmm. And so two examples, if you're looking at this and you go, I'm not so sure here, Mark Brettler and mm -hmm. Joel Baden are two scholars mm -hmm. who have looked at this and said, okay, they're, they, they see as well a similarity between the words, the rarity of the word for bush and the word for Sinai. But both of right. them read this in, in a literary style of their foreshadowing or their, you know, winking ahead to the informed reader that's coming through this text of like, oh, you're hearing through this name for Bush that sounds very much like the name of the mountain Sinai. And so right. for them, they see this as, as a sign of authorial skill, uh, the, the skill of the author, right. that that author's coming through and in the talent of their writing, they're right. dropping these little Easter eggs, right? right. That we, right. we do that in movies, dropping an Easter egg in here of a, mm -hmm. hey, the informed person knows, ah, uh, yes, Sinai, we've got that coming up right now. We're on Horeb, but that's where we're going, which is an option. Yeah, it, absolutely. It is. It's absolutely an option that that they could do. And the and the Bible does this all the time. It likes it. it it's a it's a beautiful whether or not you're religious, whether or not you buy the miracles and the and any of that. It's a beautiful piece of literature. So you could suggest you could argue and this is a it's a good argument that um, this is a literary device to kind of send Sinai, send Sinai. It's a good literary canonical argument. Uh, mm -hmm. What I want to argue is that what's actually happening here is they're trying to lace together two traditions. And because Sinai can be spelled with a, a Samic and a Noon, and then with either a Yod or a He, right? So you can, you can do it, you know, not just because of the later Aramaic influence, but you can do Sinai, Sinai, Sinai. And again, if you take out that Yod in between the Samic and the Noon, because of plain A vowels, right? The long which vowels, comes later. If you take yeah. that out, which, which you know, you're going to get later on. Then now you're dealing with Samic Noon and then the Yod and the He. And what you can do here is maybe somebody read it and maybe we can do this as an exercise. If you have the text, we can put it back up. Every time you read uh, this text and read the bush, you read Sinai. So instead of reading Sne, right, or, or Sne, right, uh, the bush, the thorn bush, you read Sinai. And if you read it that way, the text not only makes perfect sense, it is congruent with many other texts in the Hebrew Bible. So if I can, if, if you have the yeah, text, let's, do let's, that. I'll let's pull pop that, that back up. Pull that back up here. But I'm going to read it a little differently, right? I'm going to say, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. This is Exodus 3, 2. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire, right? Uh, out of the Sinai. Okay? So instead of metok uh, hasenne or hasne. Right, it's Matok HaSinai. So out of the flames of fire from the midst of the Sinai. Okay. And uh and he looked, and the Sinai was burning on fire, right? And yet the Sinai was not uh, 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 uh um not consumed. It wasn't being eaten up, it wasn't burning up. It, so there was a fire up there, but it wasn't destroying the mountain. Okay. Then Moses said. Interesting. I must turn aside and look at uh, the uh, the site Hagadol Hazea, right? This great site. I got to go look at this great site. This thing's amazing. Look at this. Um, and see why the Sinai is not 
uh, burning up, right? Is, is not uh, being burned up. And then three, four, when the Lord saw, and now again, here, it's not the angel of the Lord anymore. It's the Lord, right? So right. when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out of the Sinai, again, Matok HaSinai or Matok Sne, right? Um, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. So if you read this, exactly what it says, except you replace Sinai, which are the same letters, right? Uh, for Bush, it not only makes perfect sense within the context of these three verses, but it also makes perfect sense within the context of all of the Horeb tradition verses and all of the context of the Sinai verses, because gods live on top of mountains. And mm -hmm. when they come down, there's thunder and fire and clouds and lightning. And if you look at some other verses, and I'm just going to mention a few of them, look at Exodus, let's say uh, 1918, now Mount Sinai. And here it is, the, the Samic uh, Yod, Nun Yod, right? Here it is. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. This is Exodus 19:18. That's exactly what we what we just said happened, right? So Yeah. And if you go over and look at the Horeb tradition where where all the Horeb uh instances take place, if you look, you repeatedly see this language, metok haesh, from the midst of the fire. Uh, Deuteronomy 4.15, you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb, metok haesh, from the midst of the fire, right? Uh, 4.12, the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. Has any people ever heard of a voice of a God speaking out of a fire? Repeatedly through Deuteronomy 4, through Deuteronomy 5. So God speaks out of the fire on Mount Horeb, and God speaks out of the clouds and out of the fire on Mount Sinai. This is, it's mm -hmm. incredibly consistent throughout the rest of the Bible. So if you go back to Exodus 3, and you say, here you've got a word that only appears here. Now, we'll look at Deuteronomy 33 in a second, but it only appears here. Two place names. Okay, great. But it appears here five times, and then it appears in Deuteronomy 33, and that's the only time it appears, this odd word for a thorn bush. Is it that God speaks out of a thorn bush, and this is a, a, a one-off only time, this is the only time that this happens in the in the ancient Mediterranean, right? In the ancient Mes in the ancient Near East, this is the event. Whereas God talk on top of mountains all the time. Or did God appear to him out of the fire on Sinai, which is does consistently through the two traditions, right? Uh, and they just uh, they changed one letter, either on accident or on purpose, and uh, it becomes a burning bush. 